Hey everybody, John Finn, Church of That Walls International, CWOWI.org. Today, just jumping right in and, and saying this, there's something lacking in much of the body of Christ. And people uh, put it in different words. They'll say, where's the fear of God? But it's really beyond that. I would say it's this, there's not a teaching, there's not a valuation of having a clear conscience before God, of valuing that clear conscience. And what I'm talking about is something that Paul wrote to Timothy in his first letter. Having sent young Timothy to oversee the whole city of Ephesus and, and the thousands of believers that were in Ephesus at that time, in three separate occasions, Paul writes to him and he says, hold your faith in, in a clear conscience. Hold on to godliness. He tells him in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, he says this charge or this command, it's a military term, this command I'm giving you, Timothy, to hold your faith in a clear conscience, which some have thrown away and made shipwreck of their faith, shipwreck of their lives. And people can come back if you've been shipwrecked in your faith. You can come back to the Lord and everything. But Paul's just telling Timothy, he says, <clears throat> he says to hold on to, to, to have faith with a clear conscience. That's one of the first things that Paul says, 1 Timothy 1, verses 18 and 19. And he goes on in chapter 4 and verse 8, and he says, Bodily exercise profits very little, it profits, but godliness profits in everything now in this life and in the life to come. And then in 1 Timothy 6, 6, he says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness is living a life with a clear conscience. It is a momentum that God has in your life that you you protect uh, the treasure that you have in you. Paul wrote to the to the Corinthians and he said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What is the treasure? He was trying to get them to see that you've got Christ in you. What he wrote to, to the Colossians in Colossians 1 verses 26 and 27. He said, you know, there was a, a mystery that was kept secret from ages and from generations, but now it's being revealed. And that mystery is this, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you is a treasure, <coughs> excuse me, held in your earthen vessel. It's a treasure, and you've got to value that. And we're not teaching people today, young people, adults, or anything else, to, to value the clear conscience, to value the momentum of godliness in their lives. Godliness is that quality of life that where God is bringing stability to you in your life, in your relationships, in your faith. Those three areas. <coughs> And so as he brings stability, there's a momentum that builds. There is a, you, you learn the value of a clear conscience. You learn the value of protecting Christ in you, the treasure in you. You, you know, what happens is <clears throat> you realize that, that with Christ in you, that you and he are a majority in any situation. And you look at temptation in a different way. Because if you, if you don't realize who you are in Christ, if you, if you don't really have the revelation and the understanding that Christ is in you, the hope of glory, that you have the mind of Christ. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 16 talk about that. And verse 16 in particular, that we have the mind of Christ. We don't have Jesus' mind. Jesus has his own mind. The man Jesus, risen from the Lord, from the dead Lord, has his own mind. We have the mind of Christ, which refers to his deity, which refers to you've got God's mind on the inside of you. You've got the power of God in you, Christ in you. When you value that, when you are aware of who you have in you and who you, who is in you and you are in him, then when a temptation comes and that flesh says, boy, I'd sure like to do that, you switch your thinking and you say, you say, wow, I, I've got this treasure in earthen vessels. I love the fellowship. I love the presence, loving his presence in you. And and you you love holding on to that clear conscience. You hate the grievance that you feel when you sin. And so that temptation just fades it fades in power over you because you become more aware of Christ in you. It's very similar to the way that I tell people after I lay hands on them, I command them in the name of Jesus to be healed. And it, and sometimes it's instantaneous and other times it may, be, it may take an overnight type of thing, a gradual thing. Same way Jesus told the 10 lepers to go and show themselves to the priests and it says, as they were walking, they were cleansed. Uh, oftentimes it's like that. So I tell the people, I say, look for the healing. Don't look for what still has to be healed. Look for the healing. Look for the progression of healing that God is affecting in your life. And so it's a switch in your attention and, and in your focus of what you're paying attention to. You're looking for the healing. You're looking for what you can do better today than you, than you did yesterday. 
And in the same way, godliness is like that. Instead of looking at this temptation and, and, and everything, and it's like looming like a mountain before you, you switch your attention and you look at the mountain in you that is Christ in you, that you have the mind of Christ, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, that, that, that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You, you look at all those things and, you, and you, you rise up and you say, why should I violate that clear conscience? Why should I violate this momentum of godliness that I have in my life? And you look at that temptation and it's not a big temptation anymore. You know, it's, it, it, it's like, why should I violate that? Uh, you know, and, 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 you know, where it really turned with me, I think, uh, there was one thing that, that really, really had an effect on me, an impact. It was years ago. And I've shared this many times. I was I was driving along in, in our carts when we lived in Colorado, and and I had the sunroof open because it was a sunny day. The snow-capped mountains on my left as I'm driving north along the highway I I-25 through Denver, and uh, had run an errand uh, work-wise, and and so I was headed home, and I was thanking the Father for First John one nine. First John one nine says, "If we confess, that is, if we admit or if we acknowledge our sins." He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> In other words, it says, if you admit the, the sins that you know about, he will. He is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That is, you take care of the ones that you know about, and then he, when you do that, he automatically wipes the slate clean of anything you didn't know. He cleanses you from all unrighteousness. So I was driving along and I was thanking the Father. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness to me. Thank you that you were faithful and just to cleanse me, uh, to, to forgive me, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you for being faithful to me. And just like that, the Father broke in and he said this. He said, I'm not being faithful to you. I'm being faithful to the work of my son on the cross. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. His faithfulness is not to you and I. He's not up there flipping a coin saying, Jesus, should we forgive him or should we make him sweat? You know, this is about the 733rd time they've done this same sin. What do you think we should do? You know, and the father's not flipping a coin, looking at Jesus saying, you know, you decide. No, father, you decide. You know, and leaving you thinking, oh no, has he forgiven me yet again? No, no, no. He's not being faithful to you. It has nothing to do with you. It's not about you. It's about the work of Jesus on the cross. If you admit, if you confess, then he's faithful and just to, to the work of Jesus on the cross. Faithful and just. It's just. It's the right thing that he cleanses you from that sin that you admitted to and everything else. He wipes the slate clean. And so when you become aware of that, that shifted my attention. That was another part of the shift of my attention to say, you know what? I can control my body. I can control my thoughts. I can control my emotions. All directed to godliness. All directed to, to protecting the treasure that I have in me. To not violating the fellowship that I have. To not violating my clear conscience. You know, and if we are raised with that thinking, if we are raised with valuing Christ in us and who we have in us, then the things of this world fall by the wayside. And you think, is this going to lead me further down the path of maturity in Christ and therefore godliness, that momentum of God in my life? Or is this person, is this thing going to hurt me or injure me or prevent me from growing on in the Lord? And so you start making decisions built around Christ in you and protecting that peace of God, protecting that presence of God that you feel. When you value godliness, it gives you a freedom. And that's why Paul talked to Timothy, the last thing he said in his first letter, 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, in that last closing words, godliness with contentment is great gain. That godliness with contentment, the word contentment, again, is self-sufficiency. And it doesn't mean self-sufficiency in self, but it's in Christ. In other words, godliness with this ability to be independent of circumstances, to be sufficient in Christ, to know all things in Christ, to be able to do all things in Christ, because you have learned a secret, you've learned a, you've learned a, a entered a new dimension, as Paul told the Philippians in Philippians chapter four, verses eleven through thirteen. He he told them, you know, he said, it's, he said, I'm not coveting the offering that you sent, and I'm thankful for it. He said, but I have learned a mystery. I've entered a new dimension. Uh, I know how to to abound, and I know how to suffer lack. I know how to to be in easy circumstances and difficult circumstances. I've learned how to be content, that is self-sufficient in all things, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. 
And so the, being sufficient in Christ, having a, an independence of circumstances, godliness gives you that ability to say that no matter what is swirling around me, I've got this peace on the inside of me. I've got this treasure in earthen vessels. I have this mind of Christ. And whatever is happening around me, I'm not losing the peace. I'm going to protect the peace. I'm going to guard his presence. I'm not going to stumble in sin. I'm not going to get worried and afraid because my father has never let me down. I've got Christ in me, so I'm just looking for his provision. And it's, again, you look for the provision. You look for the healing. You look for what is happening in your life not at the temptation, not at the difficulty. You look for the the momentum of God in your life. And when you do that, you'll, you'll experience that same self-sufficiency in Christ, that the circumstances don't matter because you can walk in that peace, you can walk in that love, you can walk in that joy no matter what. But it all comes to around to protecting a clear conscience, protecting that godliness, protecting that earthen vessel or the, the Christ in you, the treasure that you have in your earthen vessel valuing that. When you start valuing a clear conscience above everything else, when you start valuing that treasure you have above all else, then the temptations of this world just fade away. And you think, why should I? It's like Nehemiah who was building the wall and he was tempted to come down off the wall and, hey, let's go talk and let's go here and let's go there. And Nehemiah said, why should I come down off the wall? I'm doing a great work. And that's the way you treat Satan. You say, hey, God's doing a great work in me. I'm building my life in Christ. Why should I come down off the wall, you know, to, to, to get into sin and everything else? I'm focused on what God is doing in my life. You can protect that clear conscience. You can protect that godliness. You can, you can realize that the godliness with that sufficiency in Christ is of great value. When you do that, you'll be happy. You'll be content. You'll know I'm not perfect. You know, you're going to say, man, I am not perfect. It is the grace of God. And it only builds an appreciation and love of the treasure of who you have in you when you walk in that grace. But you have to first have in your heart, I'm going to protect this. My A clear conscience is the most important thing to me. My my, my honor, my my name, my, my who I am in Christ, that is the most valuable thing to protect. And that builds a momentum of godliness and it brings contentment and uh, an independence of circumstances because whatever is swirling around you, you know that you're going to protect the presence in you. You're going to do what is right in all certain circumstances, no matter what people think. And you can walk in that love. You can walk in that momentum of godliness in your life. All right. I hope that's been a blessing to you. John Finn, Church Without Walls International, CWOWI.org. We're a house church network. We celebrate the gathering of the saints by meeting in homes. And uh, you, there's 10 question and answer videos on our website about house church. Uh, sign up for my weekly thoughts and my monthly newsletter. That's where we put information about our Zoom online meetings, conferences, and things of that nature. All right. Hope it's been a blessing to you. God bless. Bye-bye.